guys, it's Ava, and today I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of a 2022 recap in honor of the new year. Happy 2023, by the way. So we're gonna be talking about the real estate lessons I learned, some achievements, and kind of what happened this year in real estate. Let's get into it. So we're gonna be starting off with like some quick bullet points of the achievements I had this year in real estate in chronological order. About exactly a year ago today, I was on winter break. I read a book called Short-Term Rental, Long-Term Wealth. And I got obsessed with finding an Airbnb. So two months later, I finally got an Airbnb under contract. My goal was to get under contract while I was still 16. And I successfully did that. We closed on that in May and it was honestly probably the best experience of my life. I have never been so freaking happy. Like the three days we were actually at the property setting it up. I prepared so much for this. Airbnbs are probably the funnest way to, and funnest is not a word. Probably the best, like it is the most enjoyable way to invest in real estate in my opinion. After that, I started reaching out to people, like asking them if they wanted to invest in an Airbnb with me. And I had some partnerships that were potentially going to happen, but eventually, then I was kind of exploring the arbitrage route in real estate. So essentially you ask a landlord if you can rent out their, one of their units on Airbnb. So you don't actually own the property. You just get cash flow. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but the market started to shift. I basically zoomed with a bunch of landlords and I got a property, I got a unit and we were literally about to sign the lease. Something happened so we would have to sign it the next day and thank God we did not sign it. I swear if we signed this, it would have been a bit huge mistake. The market was turning. I just don't think it would have done well in kind of the market we're in right now. After that fiasco, I was like, okay, Ava, get serious. What do you want to do with real estate? I just graduated high school. Like this is supposed to be a full-time job now. Like. What are we gonna do? So I started reading two books by Jay Scott, Estimating Rehab Costs in a Flipping Book that he wrote. And after that, I joined the Milwaukee Rehab Mentoring Program for flipping and the rest is history. I've been marketing for flips ever since. We're still looking for one, but yeah, that's pretty much just a recap of real estate this year. Now we're gonna be talking about some lessons I learned. Number one, just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. Going back to that arbitrage thing, I could have signed that lease, but I think it would have been such a huge mistake and I'm so glad I'm not in the arbitrage space right now, just because I just think I have different plans for my life and that's just not the route I wanna go. Number two, finding a flip is so freaking hard. Direct to seller marketing, oh my gosh. I've gotten successfully buying holds direct to seller, but never a flip because it's so hard to get people's prices down, especially in like the market we were kinda in. Everyone was so used to these high prices and they're like, well, my neighbor's house sold for this. Just because that happened, like the market's going down. So a lot of sellers were super stubborn. Now they're realizing they can't be, but yeah, um, it just was a lot more difficult than I predicted. Number three, some lessons I learned, just kind of like the market changing, it taught me that nothing is stable. The real estate market is always gonna change. This is never gonna be the same. It's not always gonna be a buyer's market. It's not always gonna be a seller's market. So it's great to be constantly educating yourself on the market. I recommend the On The Market podcast by Bigger Pockets. It's super good. That's kind of how I kept um, my knowledge up just like on what was happening. Number four, cash flow is interesting. So you can be having really great cash flow, then one thing can happen like, and you just lose it all. So we were building up a ton of cash flow for one of my long-term buy and hold rentals and we had to get a big roof repair and boom, like a bunch of it was just wiped out. It's like, wow, that sucks. Number five, real estate is so freaking rewarding. As I said earlier, like when I got my Airbnb. I had a ton of time to like plan the property, order everything to like set it up. And I swear setting up my short term rental, we went to Tennessee cause it's in the Smokies. We went there for three days and those three days were the best three days of my life because it was so rewarding. I got this short term rental. I'm setting it up I'm decorating it how I like it. Like I'm decorating an entire house. That was so fun for me. And I don't know, it was just probably one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever felt in my entire life. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And I'm really hoping 2023 treats you well for real estate. Please subscribe to the Milwaukee Rio YouTube channel, like this video and comment down below. What was the best thing you achieved in real estate in 2022? All right, bye guys. See you in the next video.